So, in the uh, other videos, we have gone into detail on a bunch of subjects relating to church history and LDS.org, gospel topic essays, scriptures. And here, I'm just going to do a little overview of some of the stuff. Here we see the uh, portrayal of the first vision as portrayed by Joseph Smith in his uh, 1842 published uh, little history, history of the church uh, that he put into the Pearl of Great Price there, which he said was to disabuse the public mind and give, put, us in, put everybody in possession of the facts because uh, there had been many stories circulated that, that were uh, put out by evil people to give him a bad reputation. So he gives us this first vision story that nobody had ever heard before. And uh, they they never heard it because uh, apparently it didn't seem to exist. He had uh, done the, uh, the Moroni visit story to get the uh, gold plates. And from them give some kind of credence to the publishing of the Book of Mormon, the keystone of the new religion. But as we're going to find out, as we have found out, if we've, in the other videos, we've gone into great detail to, to see that uh, it didn't happen the way we've been told. We, we got the story that here we had the first vision, and then three years later, Moroni shows up in his bedroom. There is a nice picture of him all alone in his bed. When really he's sharing a bed and sharing a bedroom. Had like four brothers and two beds in one room. Once again, it's nothing like what we've been told in Sunday school or by the missionaries. It's kind of like a poor woman that finds a long hair on her husband's suit or something and then uh, yeah, she tries to figure out oh, well, who knows how that happened and then she smells a fragrance from a perfume she doesn't wear on something of his and puts that on the shelf basically and then at some point she finds his credit card statements or voicemail and just you know everything just comes undone she sees all kinds of bills for bars and motels and gifts or whatever for some woman he's cheating on her with and it just it all comes down and and that's kind of the way that this story is for a lot of people people read what the church gives them in the church manuals and never know about the church's history they just read the rewritten whitewash stuff and then when they get their hold of the original documents or read the journal of discourses some things they can get a hold of that or the documentary history of the church and see it's nothing like what they got in the church manuals a few quotes here and there then they see the man behind the curtain and uh, it's pretty rough so, so we saw that this seer stone looks like a brown Easter egg, which has been hiding in the church vaults and now has been revealed after the pressure of having it known too much. Now they're showing it on LDS.org. was the seer stone that Joseph Smith used to hunt for treasure, sacrifice, poor black animals too demons in the night who were guardians of the treasures they sought slitting their throats and dripping the blood around the edges of the magic circle they drew with their magic knife so even Joseph's mom admitting that they were involved in magic many other people saw that the documentation was basically overwhelming for a completely different history and that this was the stone that he eventually was said to have been 
using to translate the Book of Mormon from, I can't say from plates, because the plates weren't even in the room most of the time, according to David Whitmer, Martin Harris, Emma Smith, the scribes said he just put his face in his hat with a rock and the hat, same as he did to the search for treasure, practice, practice magic and witchcraft. You know, it's odd that Joseph copied into the Book of Mormon scripture regarding that out of Isaiah. He said, well, the Lord wasn't too happy with the wizards that peep and mutter. Peeping at peep stones and mutter because they got their face in a hat, maybe. Who knows? I just thought it was a little ironic, you know? It's ridiculous. So there he was, practicing magic all those years. He got prosecuted in 1826 when Josiah Stoll's nephew got tired of their uncle Josiah being taken by Joseph with his uh, <clears throat> searching for treasure, practicing magic, and Josiah never got any treasure. That's a little long to be practicing magic after you supposedly had a vision of God, the Father of Jesus Christ, in 1820. None of that was historical. We, his own family's testimony about what they were doing, you know, when they were joined the Presbyterian Church four years later after Joseph Smith said that they did it before the vision that never happened. And then he had all those other versions of it, and the church has got about four of them on the website now, and they try to blend it into one and make everything okay, but that's kind of like the harmonizing the Gospels thing. They don't harmonize. They're contradictory. And everything that we've got on there is contradictory. This whole history has been contradictory. So he was a magician. And went by the Spirit's instructions on a black horse at midnight on the equinox to the mountain supposedly to retrieve the plates. Good grief. I mean none of it you, know, you don't you don't read it you don't hear that in Sunday school, do you? But we've got it all documented. We've gone through that. Then he starts the Church of Christ later changes it to the Church of the Latter-day Saints and then changes it to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and then Joseph Fielding Smith lies about that in uh, Essentials of Church History and Gordon B. Hinckley lies about it in Truth Restored says uh, the original church's name was the Church of Jesus Christ which is a lie and then he said that came by divine edict and then by inspiration, the words were later, later added of Latter-day Saints to the original name. Well, the original name was the Church of Christ. He doesn't mention that. It's that he makes up the name. He doesn't mention the second name, because the Book of Mormon says you got to keep it the name of, you know, Jesus' name. And then he jumps it to the third directly from the first, which never happened. So you had at least three lies in there. And that's what we've gotten constantly, a flow of lies. Constantly. And that's what we've got on LDS.org right now. Now what do we got what do we got there on polygamy? What do we got in the articles of faith? He said we believe in following the law of the land. He said we believe in being honest, true, chaste, benevolent, and a few other things. So the story we're told about polygamy in the church is completely different from what it was. So what are we told? God wanted to restore all things, so he told him he had to practice plural relationships. So let's think about that. When Joseph married Emma, marriage is a contract. It's a legal contract. There are terms of the contract. The terms upon which she would be marrying him would be that he would forsake all others and cleave unto her alone. No other women. So we're to believe that the Lord God commanded him to break the sacred covenant with his wife of their marriage, violate the terms upon which she agreed to that contract of marriage. 
also to violate the laws of the land of every state that he committed this adultery in by pretending to marry these girls who are really concubines and you know that the church publishes on familysearch.org but you know about 30 some women that they say he was married to couldn't marry any of them legally so by what did he marry him it says it was 1843 supposedly when he got that revelation and it was 1835 when he got the some kind of sealing power which doesn't mention anything about celestial marriage it was 1833 when he was in the barn whooping it up with the uh, 16 year old orphan girl Fanny Alger or Alger that was uh, boarding at their home, living at their home and being a nanny, earning her keep. Looks like the way she earned her keep got a little bit beyond what Emma was aware of until she peeked through the crack in the barn, saw what was going on, kicked Fanny out when she was pregnant, pregnant teenage orphan. So is that what the Lord commanded? a little far-fetched isn't it of course we didn't really hear that story in church we didn't hear about the Bishop Partridge's girls staying there in the mansion house girls yeah girls teenagers the Lawrence girls whom were foster children of Joseph and Emma whom he is said to be married to there was no way to marry them so they were concubines Emma kicked them out when he caught she caught Joseph in the bedroom. So, uh, yeah, the mansion house. <clears throat> there, in my, in our mansion, are many rooms for many concubines. Was kind of what that was about. It seems like. So, uh, thirty some women. Of course, Joseph Jackson said Joseph admitted it was over four hundred in the spiritual wife system in Nauvoo which was wilder than wild well we'll just let that one go the, uh, the church hasn't admitted to that one yet but they, they do euphemize and call these other girls wives Gordon B. Hinckley said polygamy is not doctrinal on Larry King Live well if it's not doctrinal then he's admitting that all these prophets that he gains his authority through were adulterers of course, by the law of the land, they're adulterers. And Joseph Smith said, what, what a thing it is to accuse a man of adultery. You say, I have seven wives, but I can find but one. That was right before he was caught. Caught for what? Caught for having the press destroyed that reported the fact that he was involved with multiple relationships and that they showed section 132, which he never showed to the church. They printed it, so he destroyed the press to completely con continue to try to put up the facade that he wasn't involved with any other woman besides his wife. And that's not really the way the church portrays things. Uh, they say these guys were traitors and tyrants. Hail to the prophet, ascended to heaven. Traitors and tyrants now fight him in vain. Mingling with gods, he can plan for his brethren. Death cannot ha conquer the hero again. He died as a martyr. Earth must atone for the blood of that man. They were drinking wine and smoking in Carthage. Joseph had the guard go get tobacco, papers, and that was for Brother Richards, and wine for the rest of them. He didn't obey the word of wisdom. Not that day and not many other days. He didn't obey the law of chastity. He didn't obey the law of the land. He lied about what he was doing. He didn't submit section 132 to the church. He lied about the first vision. He had multiple conflicting versions and the historicity of the first one is provably wrong. The church has covered up and whitewashed history and is still continuing to do it on LDS.org and the Gospel Topic essays. And we're supposed to believe that God favored this guy over everyone else to show up and visit him in New York. It's too much even to give a summary on in 15 minutes. We'll continue this.